physical violence in a <laughs> Korean League of Legends <laughs> trash talk session. And here we go. Picks and bans for game number one. Najini Empire for SK Telecom. Uh, Varus ban. Okay, then. The list of banned by SK Telecom. Varus ban. Huh. We've been seeing players kind of hover over it. Yeah, and we've also seen uh, Varus pickups in the mid lane and other regions, so this could be something that Faker's uh, yeah. uh, working on, specifically Power of Evil on Unicorns of Love, still liking to pick up the mid lane Varus for certain matchups, and they will ban both Azir and LeBlanc. Yeah, LeBlanc not wanting Faker to have that. He still only has one loss ever. I think you have to ban team. Gragas, too, if you're SK Telecom, because that's oh, part did. of the power behind the vein compositions that Najin likes to run. And there's the Nautilus. Of course, they did heavily prioritize this in their last matchup, so. The other, the other part of it, too, is that it seems like every season, Watch has, like, one champion. And that is just the champion that Watch plays. And this season, it's Gragas. He does okay on the Sejuani as well, of course, but I think taking the Gragas away from Watch any way you can is a pretty valuable thing right now against Najin. And there's Sejuani, yeah, like you said. So looking to farm up early on here. Tom can take the Rek'Sai if he so chooses for some more early game punch. Mm -hmm. But Alistair has been such a priority for SK Telecom. Wouldn't be surprised to see it here. And the Cassiopeia may be locked in. Now Cassiopeia, oh, yeah. uh, we always talk about how good Easy Hoon's Cassiopeia is. And uh, especially in comparison to Faker, who is also skilled on the champion, but uh, funny story is that Faker is actually professionally undefe undefeated on Cassiopeia. So while we normally associate that champion with Easy Hoon, Faker is 3-0 and so far in professional games playing it himself. So no slouch. No, not at all. Been able to make plays on that like uh, any other champion. Maybe Lulu and Noon? No. We'll see what Najin actually picks. I don't know about that Zareth. What do you think? No, I would definitely not recommend picking that Zareth. I think Zareth is really not very good in the current meta. Take the Ari, Ari instead. Yeah. Go with the Nunu. Try and get some sort of hyper carry performance here. Mm. And why not go with what worked last week? Ari, it will be alongside the Nunu for watch. So setting OQ up, the Vayne pick may be incoming. That yeah, certainly could be. I keep waiting for the day where SKT just fakes everybody out and sends Cassiopeia to the top lane and then Faker gets to pick like a sick <laughs> counter pick. Very last on red side. I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> Probably not this game at least. No. So So what Sivers. is this where is this new new going? Is the question. Is this a support new new? I don't know. Uh yeah, that's a good point, <laughs> actually. Duke huh. just switched up to teleport. Flash is Duke playing top Sejuani? Top teleport Sejuani. Hmm. I I don't know what the answer to this question is. Obviously Sejuani does have some escape mechanisms from the laning phase, but probably a little bit of a challenge to farm early on with that champion. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, you could sit under turret and sort of like AOE, I guess, but you I feel like you'd probably get pushed back pretty hard. So Rexai and. Corky here. Now, there's no guarantee that this Rek'Sai is going into the jungle. Yeah. Could very well go top lane. Top lane Rek'Sai with Black Cleaver is so powerful right now. All right. And there is the vein. So it looks like this will probably be a support Nunu then, unless Pierre wants to play support Sejuani. Or support Maokai, please. Yeah, support Maokai as well. <laughs> Both supports Sup we've had. Support Ari. Maokai mid. Yeah, Ari's got the charm, you know, get those sick 2v2s. All right, well, in any case, yeah, it looks like it will be a support Nunu in this game, yeah. like you mentioned. So it's all about powering up that vein again, and they've got enough crowd control to peel for vein. So Najin going with what worked Indeed. against the Ku Tigers. Now, Rumble may go ahead and round out this composition. They want some power in the early game to try and take down Najin. Maokai falling surprisingly far through the picks and bans this time, and that's going to be the Rumble lock-in. So yeah. they have some good scaling here with the Cassiopeia in mid lane, and they also have some really nice punch in the mid game with Corky and with Rumble. Maybe lacking a little bit of tankiness here, but they do have the Alistair to offset that somewhat. But even so, Najin, with all that crowd control in there, hyper carry with a blood boil in the late game is going to be difficult for SKT to deal with. So SKT needs to look for some early dragon fights here with the Corky.
try and scale off the dragon more than anything else. Well, the interesting thing, too, is that Sivir fell all the way through Picks and Bands' this game as well. Yeah. I mean, generally speaking, SKT is a team that likes to play with the Corky, so that doesn't surprise me quite so much. Still, though. And o OQ's been all about this vein recently. <laughs> he certainly has been. Uh, and you know, the thing is, is with the Nunu, this is a vein that can also uh, also push pretty fast in lane as well, too. If they can poke people out, they can do a lot of damage to the turret. The problem is still you have the wave clear issue with Vayne. Right. There's just, there's no AoE, so yeah, Corky, really... Corky will probably be able to do more damage to the turret just because he'll be able to get the minions down faster. Nunu, absolute zero wave clear. There you go. Problem solved. There. Why am I not coaching an NALCS <laughs> team? <laughs> I hear that's about what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next season. <laughs> Here we go, guys. Najin for Seske Telecom, game number one. It's go time. See, it was, it was actually supposed to be me getting that CLG job. I sent them all the emails, but you just put your name on it. <laughs> They're like, wow, this guy's brilliant. Tr the truth comes out, Monty. I can't hide I've it anymore. I've been exposed. <laughs> Again. <laughs> well, here we go. Najin versus SK Telecom. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Bang using the wildly inappropriate for this time of year. Uh, snow, what is that thing called? Bobsled? Yeah. To toboggan? No, bobsled. Definitely a bobsled, bob Corky. It's like a two-man bobsled. I know, I see that, but I mean, I thought it was actually called toboggan instead of bobsled. Well, corky. that I think would be incorrect because a toboggan doesn't have like a top on it, does it? It's just like a yep. Regular oh, set. oh, oh, Goon taking some damage. SK Telecom chases him away. Yeah, I'm just gonna use the Q for the speed boost to make sure he gets out of there. Wolf not wanting to commit with a flash pulverize this early on, and instead, yeah. OQ going to be. Trying to get in a deep ward on the top side after seeing that invade, so they can get this lane swap. Having a new new vein lane would not be a great thing for a 2v2 matchup, as we see. Yeah, it looks like Bang Najin's and Wolf heading to the top side. Yeah, Najin's going to be able to call the lane swap and get that 2v2. Yeah, not too surprising. Yeah. And OQ Ooh, is. Some cheese. Or just seeing who comes in lanes, I suppose. He's waiting to freeze the wave. Uh, when the wave comes, so. I want some cheese. Well, uh, we can go get a pizza afterwards. No, we just need to wait for Bang to show. Oh, he's running away. What a coward. <laughs> you coward. Very difficult to cheese as a solo vein at level one. <laughs> oh, man. The wolf using that very disturbing, a lot of disturbing skins in this game. The cowboy Alistar, like, hurts his own people. Weird. That's right. He's, he's he's basically a slave lord. Very bizarre. The Immortan Joe of League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, well, in the meanwhile, we'll see how this faker of Goong Lane goes. Goong already having to pop a couple biscuits. But overall, it might be might be a little bit of a quieter early game this time. Yeah. Uh. We'll see. The junglers could really affect this one. And if Goon keeps pushing up like that, he does leave himself pre-6 vulnerable to this Rek'Sai, but mm -hmm. not quite at this stage. You see back backed off right there just in case there was going to be a level 2 gank coming in, so he's playing somewhat cautiously. Couple CS lost under the turret right there yep. uh, for OQ. I mean, pure not going to be too useful in helping him CS early on. Does have the Relic Shield, though, on the Nunu. It's been so long since we've seen a support Nunu, Doa. Yeah, it's been a really long time. And, you know, like you mentioned, it just doesn't have a ton of lane presence. There's not a lot of harassment you can do, which is a pretty core component of most supports these days. Oh, Faker gets hit with that charm. Gets uh, poked pretty hard by Goong, actually. Not afraid, though. Look at all that damage from Faker. Faker, wow, if he had had it ignite. Watch was right there, but Tom yep. had seen Watch enter that brush with the tremor sense. Otherwise, Faker may have all in that. Now, Faker didn't have ignite. Yeah. Well, if he had had ignite, he probably could have killed him just with that right there. Yeah, no ignite, though. Just has the cleanse to deal with the charms. Doesn't want to get all in. Also, just so much range CC here. You've got 
the Glacial Prison as well, taking a look at the win rates on these champions. Bang, sporting an impressive 90%. He's played that Corky a lot. Yeah, yeah. So to maintain a win rate like that is uh, pretty impressive. Decent KDA as well. And uh, I would say better equipped than ever against the snowballs from Nunu with that skin. <laughs> so yeah. you can just He's glide on by. They just deflect off the off the toboggan. <laughs> it's a fun word to say, you know? It's a good word. Toboggan. I wonder where it came from. Probably some... I'm just going to make a wild guess here. But nope. some Scandinavian nope. country? <laughs> Why should I not make wild guesses? <laughs> Isn't that what this is all about? <laughs> That's right. That's what being a professional is, though. Wild guesses. <laughs> That's right. Well, Bang and Wolf understandably pushing this lane back to turret again. And in the mid lane, more farm. Yeah, but now though, Tom doing his typical Tom thing and putting a million wards around the dragon early so he can fight the jungler if they ever go into his river. This is Tom's river. The bottom side is always Tom's river. <laughs> you never get to so go down there. If you come down there, he fights you in the river. Do you think they'd ever want to leave Vayne? Oh, alone up oh, in the... Oh, ah. oh man. Meanwhile, action. Goong has to flash away. Looks like they'll get the summoner. So a little win for SK Telecom there. No flashes used on the SKT side for that one. Yeah, caught him out there because he, yep. s he tr started to move over to that side. And with so many wards around that area, it was a, just a free tunnel knockup for Tom in order to blow that flash. So I was about to ask, do you think they would leave Vayne alone in the top lane and maybe send Nunu over to try to take an early dragon? Oh, uh... Try to help a uh, uh, watch take an early dragon, perhaps? Uh, maybe. That's a possibility, but I don't know if this Nunu has any points in consume right now, which uh, might make it difficult. True. Not really a reason to take consume unless you're being heavily harassed, which they aren't going to be quite yet. Just this Alistair is mostly just a heal, healing cow right now. Right. See what well, they here do comes though. Watch a little bit of action on the Marin in the bot lane here. Duke chasing him. There's Equalizer just to get the slow. Marin turns around for a moment. That may have been a bad idea as he gets knocked up by Watch. There's the flash, and it looks like it's going to be enough. But another summoner taken out. Oh, wow! Did he barely hide in there? I don't think they saw Wolf. Oh no, they did. All right, they did. Wolf in there. Yeah, they didn't see him until they threw the sapling in, but they suspected, uh, considering that nobody in the top lane's on the map right now, and they're trying to initiate this lane swap, and we're going to have to see Marin TP just to make sure that he gets all the golden experience off of that wave. Okay, so this could actually lead possibly to a dragon opportunity for Najin, depending on if they can take advantage of that teleport being down for Marin. We'll see. A little bit of counter juggling from Tom, stealing three of the four Raptors. Oh, Baker really chunking out Goong here. Gets charmed, but Goong can't stick around. He's taking too much damage. Yeah, those trades from Cassiopeia are really, really brutal. Well, Faker's starting to get a, a pretty massive CS lead in this mid lane as well, too. Up over 40, oh, not 40, 20 already. Yeah, Marin somehow Oh yeah. picked up a rather significant CS lead, too, up against Duke. And hmm. You see the dual lane standing smack dab in a ward and tri brush right now, so yep. they will have to back off, head back down in the lane, and now um, damage onto the tower as Tom's tunnel farm <laughs> in the bottom side. You can see he really hasn't spent any time at all on that top side of the map. Yeah, well, I mean, the bot lane was pretty safe up there, and I suppose Marin's fairly safe up there now as well. We'll see if Watch wants to maybe try to take advantage of that. Looks to be hopping over the Baron Pit wall as we speak here. All right, no wards. Maybe an opportunity. Ult up for Marin. Ah, here he comes. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, okay, I don't want to ward that right now. I already know. Well, he, he didn't have any wards to ward it, so. Oh, okay. That would have been a bit right. challenging. Just trying to check that brush, though, to see if anybody was in there. That's a good sense. I mean, a problem that Marin has had has been not playing as cautiously as he should when he doesn't have wards down. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty nice adaptation that he had right there. And now some pressure down on this turret as Bang is at level 6. Has that sheen, but Oki's been doing a great job of farming so far, just playing back and... 
hasn't really been punished with this vain pick at this stage. Yeah, and we've seen games like that from him already this season as well, too, where he's not really too concerned about winning lane really hard or even winning lane at all. He just kind of sits back and farms and waits for his opportunities to clean up team fights. Well, going even and farm in a vein lane is winning. Is winning your lane pretty yeah, much because you don't expect to actually leave that lane with an even amount of gold. So that's a nice little perk for him at least at the moment. We'll see how hard Bang and Wolf want to push this. Tom again clearing out the Scuttle Crab in that bottom side. Watch now coming in. Rab, ooh, not gonna yeah. go into lane just yet. Well, we'll see if LQ and Pure try to start something. Tom is coming down as well too, so this could end up being pretty volatile, but remember, no teleport. Well, no teleport for either side, actually, so don't need to worry about the top laners at the moment. Looks like Watch is going to recall. Yeah. No fight after all. Yeah, Bang, they were waiting to see if Bang or Wolf would commit, but they're not really willing to yet because those rockets are pretty easily healed up by the Cutlass on OQ. Yeah. So I think it was a little much to ask to try and bait the all-in right there. It's hard for both of these bot lane duos actually to do any sort of lasting damage to each other, but look at this, SK Telecom going for a dragon, and there's no vision for Najin right now. So Najin probably has a bit of an idea. Yeah, they uh, found it with the Scrying Orb, but it's a bit too late. And SKT able to take this first dragon. Yeah, nothing much they could do because the pressure has been there for SKT on mid and bottom side for most of this game. Yep. And if you lose control of both of the lanes like that and you're constantly shoved in, you can't expect that first dragon to go over the enemy if they are at all competent at League of Legends. Pretty much. Controlling the dragon is what SK Telecom has definitely enjoyed doing very well over the last maybe the last half of the last season and now early on in this season. Najin also just doesn't need this dragon whatsoever. Mm. Uh, they're going to be fine without it early. They want to scale anyway and get that tankiness where the Rumble and Corky will not be so much of an issue and if they can get onto Faker, they can just go ahead and take him out. Kind of Goon's job in this composition. Right. Assassinate the Cassiopeia if you can. That is kind of the danger for SKT. A wolf taking some hits from Watch there, but that is kind of the danger for SKT in that Faker can be pretty easily bursted down by Goon or by uh, Oku if he's isolated. Oh, Charm on to Faker. Goon doing a little bit more damage, but Faker still coming out on top of that trade. Faker's item build is very interesting. So he went tier into Merc Treads this game. Yeah. So what he's trying to do, and I haven't seen this, is he's using the Merc Tread tenacity in this matchup just to take less time on the charm. Hmm. So he's intentionally playing aggressively and getting hit by the charm, but has the magic resistance and the tenacity to win the trades overall, to get some poison damage and win the trade via having more time to spam Twin Fangs and less time for Goon to get his trade in. It's pretty smart. I think it's really smart in this matchup. Yeah. I, this is something we haven't seen Cassiopeia players do before, but you can see the logic behind it in terms of laning against this Ari, and the results are there. He's 35 CS up at this point. Mm. Look how aggressively he can play because he's absolutely not scared of this charm. Even if it hits him, it doesn't really matter. Yep, they've got vision as well, too, so he doesn't really need to worry too much about anyone coming from the side. But yeah, Faker, certainly with a big edge in this lane. Jeez, yeah, that's... wow. Anytime he hits him with the poison, those twin fangs are going to do so much. Well, Kung decided not to build any magic resist whatsoever, too, going for that Morello Namicon, wanting some more sustain in this lane instead of trying to get an Abyssal or something that we would normally see against Cassiopeia. And there's the tower going down, so Bang just keeping that minion wave fresh long enough to yep. pick up a little bit of global gold and see if Faker actually goes into the bottom side at this stage and lets Wolf and Bang head into the mid lane just to siege down the tower. Might not be a bad idea. He's going over for the blue handoff right now, it looks like. Yeah, well, obviously the his item build would be awesome against this Vayne, so that may cause some problems, but yeah. Oh, here we go. Faker pops that ghost. He's going after him, or uh, not the ghost, rather, but a little bit of damage. Yeah, just that's just the speed buff from Cassiopeia. Right, right. But yeah, Goong has to be so careful. You can see Faker not committing to that with the flash either. Just happy with these incremental leads he's getting by repeatedly pushing Goong out of lane. All right. Well, 
Baker having a lot of issues already down by 50 CS. And Baker doesn't look like he's slowing up anytime soon. That's crazy for him yeah. to have that kind of advantage. OQ and Pure actually going to the mid lane right now just to clean up this wave hmm. while Goom takes away the blue buff, so Faker coming back, going for the Archangel staff first, so trying to increase the speed of his stacking early on. This build is rather fearless. Normally we see those Cassiopeias go tier into Abyssal Scepter and then finish up the Archangels after that, but that is not going to be the goal here. He does not care about Goong's damage. Goong, no Varelonomicon yet. Do you think part of it too is that uh, Faker wants to be ready to just do a ton of damage if he finds himself in a duel against Oki or Goong early on? Well, just wants to be able to keep up. I, I, I think that would be, be helpful if the Seraph's Embrace gets completed, sure. Abyssal helps you out with your damage too. I just think he right. wants to scale quickly here. Oh, well, bit of a dive on the Duke here. Gonna twist advance over to Wolf and be able to flash away. But Baker's gonna get a lot of damage done on this mid lane turret, down to about half health now. And dragging up in about a minute, so we'll see if SKT can take that one again. Looks like they are going to get this tier one up in top lane. Yeah, and this is so problematic because I don't know what happened in the bottom lane between Marn and Duke early to create this big CS differential, but the solo lanes are both winning very hard for SK Telecom. And even though OQ went even, he doesn't have the wave clear to go bail out his losing lanes right now. So all of their towers is getting mercilessly chipped. And we start to see this large gold lead develop for SKT. Yep. And Martin just starting to get some wards down. Najin wants to get a little bit of position on that. Now Bang's in the mid lane. Okay. Yep. So they will just go ahead and push down this mid turret. It's Put actually just going to Valk it. out right there. I guess so. Uh, maybe he wanted to go back and pick up his boots or something like that before dragon spawns. Yeah, they're trying to set up for this dragon fight, which is the reason for the back. But I think they could have put a, a yep. little more pressure onto that mid lane turret. Well, maybe taking it out right there because they have so many wards. Look how many deep wards they had. They knew that nobody was going to be ambushing this Corky. Corky had Valken Flash anyway, but. I suppose slow and steady here. Just go for the dragon, which is coming up. Leave that. Not, don't leave that to chance, and then you could transition into the mid lane right afterwards. Well, it has been SKT's kind of prerogative for a while now. It's kind of slow and steady. Wait till the late game. But this time around, they're able to probably end things a little bit sooner if things keep going the way they are. A fight over the Skeller Crab, and it looks like... Tom got it with Smite. Okay, yeah. Oh, this might. So he's got another charge coming in, so yeah, they do retain control of the Speed Shrine, which has pretty much been SK Telecom's on the bottom side this entire game so far. Pink wards are down, but they're letting Najin get into the river right now. And they're going to lose that pink ward immediately, so Faker finally moving over. I guess to join up with the rest of the team, teleport's available for both top laners right now. And SKT has started it, so some pushing on the mid lane from Najin. Dragon getting lower, and there's a teleport coming from Najin. They want to try to make a play here. Alt goes in a little bit early, though. Where's the follow-up? Faker not even needing to use that cleanse. Here comes Goong, though. Leaves the fight immediately. Wolf getting a nice pulverize onto Watch. Watch getting very low. Pure creating a nice big zone. Gets a kill. Gets first blood with that absolute zero. And Najin on the run now. Tom went down, but it looks like SK Telecom should be able to push him back. Yeah, they're definitely going to push him back, and I don't think Najin can actually defend this turret right now either. Yes, they lost Tom right yeah. there. Faker tried to flash for the Petrifying Gaze, got some slows in, but they were able to peel well enough. But still no Siege coming. I mean, Corky can shoot these rockets and continue to push down this turret if he wants to. Faker backing off pretty early, actually, in this fight. Yeah, I feel like they maybe could have gotten more out of that, but deciding, again, to just play it slow and safely. Yeah, they really chucked out Najin. I'm surprised they didn't want to fight that a little bit more aggressively and try and take the gold out of the tower as well. A little bit interesting there. Tom didn't actually smite during that. It was just taken away by Faker, who now has that fully upgraded Seraph's Embrace. Yep. Yeah, it feels like SK Telecom just isn't too concerned about that mid lane. And they were like, well, everybody's there right now. It'd be easier to just come back later and do it. 
Uh, they do want to use that power spike, however. Faker going for a needlessly large rod next, so no hint of Abyssal Scepter here. May just want to get a death cap and maximize his damage early. Could also get that Zonia's Hourglass to help him out a little bit against OQ. What about uh, Ludens for just a little bit extra mobility, no, Luden, too? Ludens is excellent on Cassiopeia, so. Yeah, wouldn't be a bad second item. Anything to make Cassiopeia slither faster. Yeah, it's just her spell spamming as well causes that Ludens to proc right. a whole lot. Very true. Yeah, Faker continuing to be 50 CS up in this mid lane. Oh, we've seen so many Cassiopeia bans, so many blue side Cassiopeia first picks, and Goon played it, but he played it against Anarchy, and he did not look great on Cassiopeia himself. Well, it's not really his style of champion, you know? No. It's, it's very meta right now, but Goon pretty much can only play Assassins. Oh, the leash. The leash is real. Oh, well, give up. Who needs that blue buff anyway? Oh, man, they may lose their mid lane turret because of this. Wow. Looks like they will. That's actually huge. Man, so the blue buff misleash causes Najin to lose that mid lane turret. They couldn't get back in time to defend it. Yeah, they may not have been able to get defended anyway, but they definitely couldn't when that leash went down. So it's a hard thing for Najin to deal with. More wards going in, deep for SK Telecom. Vision control for them has been on point this game. Well, yeah, this is just leading into SKT kind of taking a cakewalk into the enemy jungle and removing all of Najin's camps from the equation here. For SKT, this game has been incredibly smooth in terms of their map control and just their lane dominance. I mean, look at this. They've walked out to a 4,000 gold lead and completely destroyed the outer ring of turrets in a game that has a single kill at 20 minutes, and it's not yeah. even theirs. <laughs> And two dragons. It's too tactical for me, Monty. It's too tactical. I, need, <laughs> I like it. I need more action. I know this, this is definitely your kind of game. What the team with less kills is winning because of objectives. And I know. Strategy. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Wow. Can we all take a moment to appreciate how gorgeous this is? Terrible. Like, like a Da Vinci or a Van Gogh. Yeah. See? You're not into that? You, yeah. you like the Caravaggios, the ones with all the violence? Yeah, man. <laughs> Caravaggio's my favorite. How did you know? It's true. Well, I'm more about the way that he tends to use a single very stark light source in his paintings. I've emulated that quite a bit in my own <laughs> oil painting. Yeah. You know, in all seriousness, he's probably one of my favorites. Definitely one of my favorites. I was also really into Mortal Kombat as a kid, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of severed heads in Carvaggio. Faker comes back to defend his mid lane. Just in time. Bit of help from Wolf. 60 CS up now. We'll keep you updated, don't worry. And there's the Abyssal Scepter from Marin too. Fantastic item to help Faker out as well. Oh yeah as he continues his utter dominance on Cassiopeia. Wow, I, I'm surprised at Goon this time. He really got rocked in the laning phase. And the wards were there for Figure to do it. Uh, Tom yeah. actually playing a more Bengi style this game of just heavily warding around mid and in the enemy jungle, so Faker could play that aggressively with those early Merc treads, and there it is, death cap completed. It just seems like with Faker on your team in the mid lane, that's just the better way to play this jungle. You know, you just need to give Faker the breathing room to do what he does best. Yeah, and Faker really only plays one way, and that's balls to the wall aggression. <laughs> hey, if it works, who's gonna stop him? Well, not Goon this game, I guess, is the nope, answer. Definitely not. Dragging up in about 25 seconds, but SK Telecom is so strong right now. I think Najin's going to have a very hard time fighting this well, if they want to. Faker's in a huge power spike compared yeah. to Goong. He can just walk all over him right now. Marin, in the meantime, is just working. Let's get a turret. Why not? Working on that top side tower. Overheating a little bit, but he's got that TP up already. Duke is here, but they he's going to have to home guard into top hmm. to deal with this tier 2 push. He's not even going to make it in time. Wow, they're just going to take the tier two. Yeah, Marin just takes it. And Duke will be able to push him back for now. But Marin's fine with that. He's like, all right, I just need to get out of the way so that I can teleport down and help my team take Dragon in a moment. 
SK Telecom already activating it. And they've got the wards too to see where Najin's coming from here. And Faker's just gonna take apart this dragon so fast. Here we go, teleport coming in. Missed SKT all. disengaging for now. Rockets coming in as well. Wolf blown up a little bit. Flashes away. Marin not teleporting yet. Now he comes into the bot lane. Dragon getting low. And it looks like Najin will take it. SK Telecom wants some revenge. The Equalizer not actually slowing down too many people on Najin. So despite the strength for SK Telecom, Najin actually making it out of that one. And it looks like they want to try to push this mid lane. This may be a bit brave, but hey, without the ults to worry about, why not? Well, that's a really weird timing from Marin right there. He yeah. was very late. very late to that fight. Even though Watch missed his ultimate and only got the slow, because Marin wasn't there for the counter engage, they still actually managed to deal a lot of damage to Wolf, who had to flash out after using his ultimate. So really, a very, it was a poor teleport and then a terrible equalizer from Marin. It's a very uh, uncharacteristic fight for Marin. Usually you don't see that. Yeah, I wonder what happened up there. I have to take a look at the replay to see why exactly he was late, because he was pushing down that tier two. And considering Duke's teleport timing, it looked like he was just waiting for the recall so he could go back and buy before he came in. But he didn't need to buy to take advantage of the edge that was handed to them already by Najin. So right. a bit of a misplay from SKT. And we see that Aegis, as our observers pointed out, finished right now. So that's going to make Goong's life even harder while he struggles to get his death cap. Yeah, it just doesn't seem like Goong is going to be in a position to really blow anybody up this game unless he can get back on the game, uh, Bang rather. Well, even Bang is going to have a Blade of the Ruined King soon, so he'll have that active at least to help him out. Yep. So it's really on OQ, you know? OQ needs to find opportunities and fights to really carry this team. Oh, there's the blade done right now. He's already got that Aegis from Tom. Yeah, but I mean, SKT, the, the dragon going to Najin is obviously quite good for Najin because they're stalling out this game. Now, I'm not sure that even this Blood Boil Vein is going to be able to do more than Oh, Marin having to use that equalizer, getting caught by OQ, flashing away. Duke's gonna jump right on him. Marin getting OQ very, very low. OQ barely making it through that fight, but SK Telecom taking Baron in the meantime. Watch knows, but Wolf just shoves him away. Baron taken by SK Telecom. Yeah, so you Marin can't. giving his life for that one. You can't commit on the bottom side of the map to that degree without teleport with your AD carry, who's the only person on your team doing damage because of how far behind Goong is, against SKT, who has a Cassiopeia and a Blade of the Ruined King on their AD carry already, because that Baron is just going to melt like we saw. Well, that said, Najin does manage to take a, a Tier 1 and bot lane out of it, so able to get a little bit of something. As but they now, lose you know, who's their there? Tier 2 in mid. Yeah, who's there to take the, who's there to defend this? Nobody, really. Barely survives for now. Well, they're oh. worried about Goong's flank right here. They've got the wards to give him the yeah. heads up. Misses the charm, actually, as Tom emerges from the tunnel. Seemed pretty close, but didn't quite connect. Yeah, now Marin all the way down to bot lane again. Pushing things up, so not able to teleport up to help SK Telecom if they need him. Now moving over. So Najin, not quite, not quite dead yet. Not quite dead yet. Nope. The Najin mod. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Goong though, barely escaping, has to use that ultimate to get away from Bang. Wow, Bang actually doing a lot of damage with those rockets, and that's going to be a dead tier two now. So another uh, trade for a tier one. Najin sent four people topside and had to recall right there. They do lose the tower. Now they may not have been able to get that one anyway, or to save it rather. So they trade one for one, but tier two for tier one. Now, SK Telecom looking to move this minion wave closer to the last tier two standing for Najin EM Fire. Yeah, and the, the more they can do that too, the easier it's going to be to take this dragon as well and even I'm, things up in that regard. I'm surprised that SK Telecom has been so passive this game with the advantage that they have. They're playing this really safely. Yeah. Well, I think they've seen what, you know, Goong and Oku have done to other teams, and they just don't want that to be them. Well, 
but letting Oku get a billion farm is a good way to let it happen to you. So Oku's 1-0-1, one, and, one, and he's managed to stay alive and keep on farming. He has fallen behind in terms of CS now, but for the most part in that early game, did keep pace with Bang. And is Najin actually going to fight over this next dragon? Well, might be tough if they do. Faker picked up his Void Staff, so he's going to be doing even more damage now. Yeah, Faker's completely ridiculous at this point in time. Yeah. yeah 675 AP already. And meanwhile, Marin's got his Zonias. Tom has his Locket of the Iron Solari, so they've got that MR as well, too. So yeah, SKT is really in, again, you know, prime position for a team fight here, but we'll see if Najin gives it to them. Yep, just pushing forward, making sure they have pressure for when this dragon starts. Ward's already set up by SKT. Right. Najin's done, I feel like, a pretty good job of being evasive this game. Teleport coming in, though, for Marin. Uh, Najin, though, yep, knowing when to back off. They're not going to give him a chance to use Equalizer over the wall or anything like that. Sidewave's already set up for SK Telecom as well, so Najin has a lot on their plate to deal with. Yeah, they may have to just give this dragon up. See if maybe they want to rush a tier two or something. Dragon getting taken by SK Telecom right now. And Wolf on the side to kind of zone a little bit. SKT gets it. They're going to turn onto Najin. Not able to quite catch anybody, it looks like. Marin still has it. Equalizer, here we go. Coming in now. Can they catch him? Get ahead by Pull Rise. Great equalizer as Najin tries to escape into the jungle. Duke going deep now, trying to escape and banging a lot of hits from the outside. Absolute Zero does a little bit of work, but Pure. Taken down as well, it's Najin's or uh, SKT's first kill of the game. And number two comes in as Faker takes down Duke. And SKT, whoa, Faker flashing over the wall. Wants that kill onto OQ Wolf, coming in with the headbutt, the pulverize, the double kill for Faker. And SKT coming alive now at 30 minutes. Faker and has such smooth Cassiopeia mechanics in these no team kidding. fights. And that is SK Telecom. Somehow had an 8,000 gold lead with zero kills. Doesn't even get a kill until after 30 minutes into this game. That's crazy. And isn't still it? just crushes Najin. Wow, Goon just can't even escape his own base. Tom taking about this apart this inhibitor, and if he can't finish it off, the rest of SKT should be able to. Watch him here. Maybe in a little bit of trouble as they get knocked up. SKT finally taking that inhibitor, and they'll just back off. Successful. And that's what SKT was waiting for. They finally got the fight. They finally were able to beat Najin. Yeah, great save on the equalizer. Much better yep. equalizer from Marin this time around as he catches them all in the choke. And well, as soon as everybody's taking poison from Faker in there, easy to track people down. Faker even flashing over the wall. That was just perfect, though. SKT, you know, I mean, Cowboy Alistar hurting uh, Najin into that little <laughs> choke, getting him ready for that equalizer. That that's right. really Hurt, couldn't have been much better. Hurting them to the slaughter. Yep, that's right. They were like cows to the slaughter. <laughs> all yeah, right. look at that. Just pushing them all in there. It's such a good equalizer. OQ tumbles yeah. off of it. And there we have the ult from Watch, but it doesn't buy them enough time right there. Bang going to QSS out of it and remember that Faker has cleanse as well so here he comes getting the poison down getting that little bit of speed and then hitting all those twin fangs yep. to finish it off and this flash right here over the wall with the petrifying gaze forces a flash out of OQ forces that condemn but doesn't actually get the stun wow. and Wolf coming from the flank knocks him into the wall for the Alistair combo and the finisher on the twin fangs Yep, Faker with another needlessly large rod on top of everything else now, so the damage is pretty immense. And look at this, they're going to try to catch Wolf here. Wolf backing away with Faker. Bang is there as well, too, to fire those rockets into the choke. Faker has his ult up. This could be bad. Najin needs to be careful here. Faker turning around, waiting for an opportunity. There, uses the ult, freezes quite a few, and Equalizer comes in as well. Faker unafraid of that absolute zero as Najin chase away again. There's the double kill. Will he get more? Marin picks one up. Man, Faker just waited and waited, and again, Najin finds himself in a choke with that Cassiopeia ult and the uh, and the Rumble ult, too. Does not work well. And Faker waited so long on that yeah. Petrifying Gaze, actually waiting until Wolf went down to find the right time to use it. Watch. It really was perfect. Picked the wrong bush to recall from, <laughs> and now that well, corresponds back. with Baron coming right back up. So Najin did what they could. They had to make a pick before that Baron started. Their only way to get back into the game was to get a pick before Baron, take Baron, and try and rush the Nexus. Not going to happen. 
That Baron could not have come up in a more perfect time for SKT. Yep, man, that, that Cassie P ultimate, we knew it was coming. Everyone was just like, <laughs> all right, wait for it, wait for it. Wait for it. Yep, <laughs> there it was. There is Wolf. Pretty perfect. Buffing minions. Tom now, void rushing into the bottom jungle. Not going to be able to get down to that minion wave with the vein there. Doesn't want to risk it. Pure also giving OQ some vision to make sure that he doesn't get ambushed by anyone. And now this should just about wrap this one up. I would say so. I think it's going to be very difficult for Najin to fight this bang coming in. Just decides to jump right onto Goon. Whoa, Wolf comes in with the headbutt pulverize. Wow, it knocked him out of the spirit rush no right kidding. there. Yeah. For Bang to finish, Bang just so strong, he's able to 1v1 the Ari right now. That is not a good sign for Najin. Not so much. And I think the all signs point to SK Telecom taking a pretty smooth game one here. They've got that Baron buff. They have minimal resistance from Najin coming in. Duke trying to defend as best he can, but SKT will see if they can push for the win right here. Those knockups say they probably can. Another nice equalizer from Marin gets OQ. There's the exhaust on him as well as he gets pushed back into his own base, a double kill for Bang at the end of all things. And there goes Nexus turret number two, with Watch gone, with Pure gone, and OQ undefended. That is going to be game one, going to SK Telecom. GG. What a stifling performance, and for a team that didn't have any kills until after 30 minutes, by 35 minutes, they had 11. Yeah. That's the amount of advantage that they got out of that laning phase That is having Marin and Faker be so far ahead in terms of CS and controlling the early dragon. That is what you call lights out performance from SKT. Very nice. That was a plan coming together in spades for SKT. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Najin can't lose lane that hard against SK Telecom, a team that can turn that CS into so many objectives. 